Hello everybody, welcome back to another video and we are back finally for some F123 My Team Career Mode for the Australian Grand Prix here in today's video. I hope you all enjoy this video. Spoiler alert for the last race. Uh, we had a bit of an engine issue. So, yep. So if you did not see the last video, go check that out. The other F123 My Team. Um, if you did not see the first episode too, it is in a playlist down below. So hopefully, well not playlist down below, if you just go to playlist, you'll see F123 right over there. And more of my team content is coming, don't worry. We are here, and we are here for the Australian Grand Prix. But, it is now time to look at the performance index. And, lost some time a little bit, but hey, things happen. And again, the gearbox was the component to blow up in the last race. So, that's not ideal, but again these things happen and I think we might have to take a new engine for this race basically I'm thinking about only just going to the second ICE because well the ICE is pretty low and um, yeah it's a bit of a question mark there once again but anyways getting ready for um, the Grand Prix we're gonna do some upgrades here once again we're gonna do a major um, a DRS upgrade and also we're gonna upgrade the chassis department to get us into spec 1 that's we're going to be doing a build time upgrade for the chassis, which the chassis is the main part of the car that you have to focus on, I feel like, when I play F123. But we get both our upgrades on, though. A very weight redistribution upgrade coming onto the car. And also we get um, the engine upgrade that's coming on for Australia as well. So that is a positive. And we also can now do some tire wear upgrades as well, which tire wear has been... Oh, boy. Tire wear has been, that's, that's been a story. Um, tires have been stupid. What I mean by stupid is they've been falling off constantly. But again, three upgrades coming onto the car, getting ready for Australia. We got a big up, upgrade package coming in, which is very good because, again, the development race will be key to basically decide on what's going on. And again, just looking at this, it's just so close between us. Williams, Alfa Romeo, McLaren, Haas, Alfa Tari, and Alpine. This is basically the midfield right here. Aston Martin is just in a league of their own. Same as Ferrari, McLaren, Mer <laughs> Ferrari, Mercedes, and Red Bull obviously leading the way. Obviously. So. Bit of a uh, wet weather progress in FP1. Um, started off finally got my little bit of uh, wet track experience and uh, again it feels much better in the wet compared to uh, how it was in F122 F122 wet races were poop they were pretty much a pile of poop and uh, well they got figured out so thank you but anyways uh, FP1 is done and uh, just did a lot of um, race trim and everything like that Liam did some quality laps P18 though um, practice doesn't really like show your performance it's just again i mean it started off wet in the session and i only really only had a couple laps on the dries and the track was drying up a lot so obviously track improvements were coming because when i was out on the dries it was still pretty damp out there but again um practice two went pretty well uh we're actually we're close to the top 10 so the car felt good though um i feel like i'm getting a little bit more useful to the car and again it's just it's not look trust me i mean it's not a bad car to drive now it's it's decent it really is it's just again it's just more just can we it's just the main problem is can this car stay reliable because again we do have one of the worst we do have one of the best engines but it's actually the worst at durability because the ferrari engine has been the first two races bahrain four of the, four out of the eight ferrari powered cars have blown up and those are being ferrari haas alfa romeo and obviously us in the Ferrari powered cause, so bit of a rubbish part. But anyways, we're going straight into qualifying here once again for the Australian Grand Prix. Um, once again, no introduction to qualifying because why not? And we're just jumping straight on in for our first lap here in qualifying here in Australia. But anyways, Nick DeFries had other options. He decides to block us just a little bit here, so we're going to lose a little bit of time for the beginning part of the lap. But once again, we're going to get around Latifi. <laughs> not Latifi, DeFries just fine. And again, you could go flat out finally through that corner. Whoa, even in F122, you could not go flat out. It was so annoying. <laughs> you could, even if you tried to go flat out, you couldn't. It it just it it pissed it it pissed me off. 
<laughs> it pissed me off. But again, we get a decent lap, though. We go third fastest ahead of Ocon and Sonoda, which Ocon didn't even get a good lap in, so that's a bit compromising there once again. But anyways, further into the session, we're in P9. Um, okay, I'm very much happy with that. DeFreeze is last, as always. Um, but we're P9. That I think, honestly, we might be... S I, I don't know. We could be safe in a Q2, honestly. It kind of all depends. Liam Lawson's 18th, though. He's about... Nearly about a couple, I think about six, seven tenths, maybe five tenths away from us. So, a bit difficult again to judge. Um, a couple big names out in front. But anyways, we go out for a second lap. And uh, this is actually on a new set of tires. So, we're going to see what we can do on the second lap here once again around Australia. And again, I feel like Australia, it's just, it's so much nicer to drive in F123 than it was in F122. It's just, it's much smoother. I don't know if it's just me or not, but it just feels so much smoother. And again, I loved, I loved driving, I loved driving Australia. I really did. But again, could we get into Q2? Yes, we do. Q2, P8. We've not had a Q1 exit yet. Fingers crossed. But that is what I call an absolute storm of a lap, as that is moves us up into P8. And uh, that's actually best of the rest so far. But now the main question is, though, did Liam Lawson get into? Q2. I hope he did. Uh, let's print. No, he did not. And he's P20. Ahead of Logan into freeze, though, so that's good. But, uh, yeah, just. Okay, bud. About, <laughs> about a second away, so that's unfortunate. But again, Q2. Um, it wasn't. First lap was a bit iffy. Uh, we're on a used set of tires. Hogberg was also, uh,. Hulkenberg was just being confusing as hell because I tried to let him go. He didn't want to go. The AI are still like that when you try to let them go because, again, I just don't want to impede the AI. But fortunately, I did. But anyways, P16. So this is going to be a very crucial lap here for Q2 in this qualifying session here through for the Australian Grand Prix. Anyways, here's a, here's a, here's a good lap around Australia here. Once again, we'll do a full lap review once again. Coming to the next couple of corners here. Once again, very good rotation. Through those next couple corners. Don't touch that outside curve just a little bit. I kissed it just a little bit. And right here, easily flat out. No problems needed. Just have to do a little bit of a lift though. Mainly because, again, if you just... Just a little bit. Because I felt a little bit of understeer coming off. And I just felt the car just kind of kicking out a little bit at the rear end. But that is easy flat out through qualifying here. Once again, now through this next part of the track. DRS finally in this part of the track. So overtaking will be a little bit easier this year and again just look at this five tenths improvement almost six tenths improvement on fresh tires so that is very much a good lap so far and again absolutely on the limit here in australia here once again seven tenths improvement almost eight tenths improvement here breaking a little bit later in this part of the track just to get some good rotation in a little touch of the curb around the outside and just once again almost a second improvement here once again and coming through the last couple of corners here once again almost a second improvement but anyways, coming around to the penultimate corner of the lap here once again. Simple as that. DRS overtake on almost 1.3, 1.4 seconds on this lap. Where is this going to put us? This puts us up in a P7. Hell of a lap. One hell of a lap by me. But now the problem is, though, can we stay ahead, though, in Q3? That is the main problem. We're in! We're into Q3. And that is a good lap. Two seconds away from the Mercedes. Two tenths away from the Mercedes, though. But... That is it. <laughs> we get a decent lap. We're ahead of Fernando Alonso in that Ast in the Aston Martin, and that is honestly, I'm I'm impressed with that. I really am. But anyways, final lap of the qualifying. We only did one run in this session. Uh, just a bit of a scrubbly lap through the first few sectors. But again, I don't know if that will be a major improvement. This could be. Uh, no, that actually is P9. I thought it could have been P10, but no, we get P9 in Q3. So. So far, the car's got some pace in it. And again, it's just Australia being so much of a power track. You can run a you can run a pretty low downforce setup, but it's, again, I mean it's I'm running about 2019, like very low, like one to two kind of wing setup, so like eighteen like thirteen to around like twenty, just a little bit. Getting used to the setups obviously, but Right up here, Gasly, and we're just a couple tenths away from Espinoca and could have found at least two tenths to get possibly Fernando Alonso too, but P9, I'm very happy with that result. I think it's a good result for the team. And um, Verstappen locks out pole position. Lewis Hamilton starts off P2 though in the Mercedes, so uh, take a look at that. But anyways, that's enough of that. 
It is now race time for in Australia. Let's go racing down under. Well, once upon a time, this used to be the season opener before it fell victim to a pandemic reshuffling. But now Albert Park is back at the heart of the F1 calendar. So welcome to Sunkissed Melbourne for the Australian Grand Prix. We go racing today then in the state of Victoria where the drivers have 14 corners and 3.28 miles to navigate at an average lap speed of around 120 miles per hour. Close proximity of the barriers make accidents inevitable. Recent history shows us that a safety car is not at all out of the question. Let's run you through the driver grid order for today's exciting race. Max Verstappen put in a fantastic lap yesterday and he'll start from pole position. And Lewis Hamilton completes the front row. Moving on to the rest of the grid, we have Perez, Leclerc, Sainz, Russell, Fernando Alonso, Ocon, Joker, Gasly, Norris, Joe, Stroll, Hulkenberg, Sonoda, Bottas, Albon, Oscar Piastri, Magnussen, Liam Lawson, Sergeant Liam Lawson. Which of these talented drivers will come out on top today? And what would any Grand Prix weekend be without the one and only Natalie Pinker? Now, can I get your take on Max Verstappen? What a quality performance. The big question, though, is how does that translate on race day? Can they hold on to that lead? And, of course, it's looking very close here today. A lot is going to be riding on those first few corners. And then the question becomes, who can manage their tyres so they're in a good position to push hard towards the end? Here we are on the grid here in Australia, here once again for the Australian Grand Prix. Um... Very much P9 starting position. Looks like first uh, Max, different strategies through the field, people on the soft. So I think we're going to go with the medium to the hot strategy. A one stop strategy strategy should be the key success here around Australia here once again for this race. And um, I expect that to be mainly the preferred strategy. But, anyways, we got the five red lights here in Australia. Five red lights, and we're now underway for the Australian Grand Prix. We're here once again in the land down under. We get a decent start ahead. We get ahead of us about Ocon. Alonso uh, didn't get the greatest start because of Carlos Sainz being in the way. Once again, down to turn him one ahead of shot on Carlos Sainz, but Sainz defends that simple and easy. Move is done, and now Fernando Alonso is all over the back of us here once again. Uh, hopefully he doesn't get us here just a little bit. We're going to go down the inside through turn number three, just getting some good rotation in once again, and again, Ahead. Bit of a yellow flag behind. Could be just be the car slowing down a lot. But Perez didn't even get a good start either. George Russell and Carlos Sainz all in that battle there. Once again, Leclerc, Hamilton, and Verstappen are gone. And again, Fernando Alonso is all over the back of us here. Once again, I Alonso is going to fly by us. I don't, I'm don't. i not going to expect to fight this very much longer. And uh, I'm not trying to block him, but he's just he's just not getting by. I mean, the, the door could be open around the outside, but Fernando decides to not do that. So... Still comfortably ahead here in P7 once again, but again, I kind of want to be behind Fernando, mainly because I know we can't compete with the top. Alonso's got some pace. That Aston Martin is pretty quick. I think if we just stay behind Fernando, we can be up there with the top guys. But look at this, Espinoca and Orlando Norris, they're battling for position. While they're battling, I can get in a train with Alonso, stay hopefully in his DRS, and I can basically just flip the coast to the end. And hopefully we can just stay in Alonzo's DRS. And hopefully we cannot make hopefully we cannot make a mistake. But all kind of Norris, they've been battling for so long. Well, they've actually lost a lot of time squabbling. And again, that's gonna basically benefit us. Because we're gonna basically pull away. And we're gonna pull away from these guys. Now two now two seconds away from them. And again, now it's just gonna be lifting and coasting, staying behind Fernando Alonso as much as we can. So that is basically the whole goal of this race, but Alonso's pace isn't so good. Um, he's not really catching up to Carlos. Uh, he's kind of running in a, his own little race, which is kind of unfortunate. But again, if we get to stay with Alonso, we could possibly have a shot to battle him in the future. Because again, I've raced with Lance Stroll, and uh, well, he's not he's, he's he's pretty crap. But anyways, Yuki Tsunoda, though, he's I think he's retiring from this race. And one look at this, and yeah, he is retiring, and he's got an engine issue. Or some sort of issue, but look at this. Uh, Hulkenberg has been trapped. Liam is in that too. I mean, everyone just got stuck there in that gaggle. Wow, what the hell is Pierre Gasly doing back there? Or is that oh, that's Gasly? 
Gasly's in the back there once again, but take a look, little quick look at Liam. He's doing uh, pretty well. Uh, just got caught up in that, though. That could have gained a little bit of positions there, but okay. But so far, it's a pretty lonely race for us, though. Just staying by in Fernando Alonso here once again on lap four of this race. And he's just, he's not gaining a lot on the Ferrari, which of Carlos signs very much as well. And Hamilton and Verstappen and the soft tires, they're just on a league of their own. And we're just kind of just chilling back here. Just, again, it's just going to be lifting and coasting and just watching these tires. Just see how quickly these tires go off. Because, again, I mean, the think the rears go off more. But again, once my rears go off, I don't really have enough front, and I need some front end in this car because again, if I don't get front end, then ooh, this uh, this car is going to be a boat, and a little bit of a snap there once again through the middle section. But also, pulling away is actually helping us pull away from Landon Norris and Lance Stroll because again, they're getting DRS, but I feel like they might be scrubbing a little bit. While I'm, I'm not really scrubbing, I'm more just sitting in Alonso's DRS, and I'm basically just lifting and coasting, which is probably helping me just again, it's just not using so much of the tires here once again but I'm using up a lot of the tires though just to stay with Alonzo Alonzo just because the Aston is pretty quick but obviously the race pace is going to be needed and again I'm just the tires are falling off so much that it's just hard to keep up with Alonzo because again I feel like the AI don't really experience this much tire wear so um, a little bit tricky but so far it's pretty lonely on lap 6 now of this Australian Grand Prix and again just Chucking along, chugging along once again. Uh, science is pulling away, but again, just stayed right in the DRS with Alonzo, thankfully. And again, Lando Norris, so he's. Oh, Lando Norris is out of the Australian Grand Prix. That McLaren has went up into a pile of smoke, and now Lance Stroll and Nesbitt Ocon are now going to be the new dual threat. Unfortunately, but again. McLaren with an engine issue here once again. It's, oh, oh no. Okay. Say hi. Hang, hang. Okay. Oh, hot attack, hot attack, hot attack. Um, <laughs> that could have been our race done and over there once again. But problems with that is we lost time to Alonso and we are basically going to fall off like a rock because Stroll and Ocon, they got the DR. Ocon's got the DRS and he's just going to catch up to us because, again, that Aston Martin is so much quicker than us and. If, if Stroll was behind Ocon, it could have been easier, but it just, yeah, things happen. And again, look at these tires, 33% already on lap 8. I mean, these tires are dreadful. And I was really feeling these tires falling off again. I mean, we're going to see a, <laughs> a lot of snaps through that corner. And um, that was just basically the whole memo of this race, because right, this part right here was just very lonely. I was just by myself, just kind of trying to minimize the pace of the car. Because obviously, again, I'm just, I want to keep a steady pace, but again, I also want to be safe with the tires. Because I don't want to use up the tires too much, but again, when I'm using up the tires a lot, just trying to pull away a little bit, you know, it's kind of unfortunate. But again, this is mainly all the pace that I have on these tires right now. I'm taking it a little bit easy, just because I don't want to use up too much of these tires, because again, I just, I'm afraid I could make a mistake. Again, it's, it's, it's very hard to spin out, I feel like, in this year's game. But again, see right there, just taking it so much easy through that corner there once again. And a uh, little bit of a pause there real quick. Uh, but it's okay. If there's Sergio Perez came into the pits, though. He's pitting onto the hot tires, so he has some sort of damage, or he got some sort of damage. I don't really know what happened, but Lance Stroll now. Oh, another snap there once again. Lance Stroll has actually five seconds away, and once again running out wide there. Once again, not getting so good rotation, and... This car once again. We got a couple more guys pitting. Hamilton's into the box. Uh, I believe also Verstappen's in the box, and I believe that's kind of it. So like the front, the the two leaders are have came in a pit. We're gonna get ahead now. That moves up into P5 in this race, which now is pretty good because again they might. Uh, nope, Alcon doesn't get ahead. I think Stroll came into the pits as well. So Stroll is very much in the undercut range, and he could possibly undercut us here once again. It just depends on this outlap. But once again. Trying to find that pit marker board. We don't want to overshot it too much. And again, we come into the pits. I believe Espen Ocon has came into the pits as well. We need a clean stop from the boys here. Hopefully we get a good stop here once again. Do we get the stop? Yes, we do. Simple as that. 2.5. A little bit of a slow. A little bit slow, but not too bad. And once again, now we're going to come out here once again. Hopefully we get ahead of Lance Stroll and also Valtteri Bottas. Because Bottas came into the pits. And we are going to get ahead, thankfully. 
of these two crossed almost over the, the yellow line, so we, that could have been a penalty, but Valtteri Bottas, he goes pretty well around here. He's coming up in this battle. And again, now we can actually pull a little bit of a gap now with these cold tires, so um, hopefully that is very much the key to success. But Stroll is absolutely flying, and again, I feel like this Aston Martin is going to be a bit tricky to uh, <laughs> battle with later on on lap 15 of this race and again coming through here it is launch stroll Valtteri Bottas they're not side by side who's got the DRS Stroll's got the DRS Aston Martin is not is pretty slow in the straights but again he actually does he know oh he did oh he doesn't have DRS I thought he did have DRS unless he had a back out of it and he didn't activate the button there once again stroll ahead of Bottas though and now our teammate Liam Lost came to the pits and now launch stroll now has other plans he's gonna he's absolutely gonna be on the mission He's going to go around the outside. I think we're going to let him go here. He's not really our race, but again, I do want to stay ahead of Stroll just a little bit because those points are going to be vital for this, um, mainly because, again, I, w I want to score points as much as I can because, again, I feel like we could get screwed out in this development race later on. It is so early in the season that everybody could overshadow us 100%, but again, it kind of all depends. But anyways, launch Stroll now. He is ahead, and we got the DRS, and we're going to just sit back here and lift and coast. That is just how we're gonna do it. We're gonna save these. We're gonna save the hogs just a little bit. We don't want to use them up too much because again, we could save these for the future to get around Launch Stroll. Because again, I want to stay with Stroll as much as we can, so we can have a little bit of a battle with them here once again. But later into the lap, Botas or that's not Botas. That's actually Sergio Perez. He's back there. He came in so clearly he got some sort of front wing damage. But again, we're in the slipstream of uh, Launch Stroll, and I gotta get by him as soon as I can because Sergio is coming, and I don't want to lose any time to that Red Bull. But again, Stroll defends the out around the outside, defends from me, and again, I'm gonna have another move down into the next couple of corners through that nice tight to the next uh, tight corner here. Once again, go around the outside of Launch Stroll. We're gonna dummy him now. We're gonna go down the inside of Stroll, down to the breaking zone here. Very sharp breaking zone. We're gonna get ahead of Launch Stroll. Stroll goes out wide just a little bit. He's gonna defend now from Sergio Perez. He defends the inside line. Perez got the inside. He's going to get ahead of Stroll. Stroll's going to fight this back now through the corner. They're going to be scrubbling, which they're going to lose some time. With this, Sergio and Stroll make contact. And uh, that could be a little bit of some floor damage. But look at Espinalco, and he's then back into this battle. And sh look at that. Sergio Perez has got around Lost Stroll. And now Perez is all over the back of us. And this is compromising our time. Because, again, now we're having to fight Sergio Perez. And I'm not, I don't want to fight him. But, again, he's just he's trying to get around us. And we're going to lose some time from this battle because of this. And we're not going to be... We're not going to be in the DRS because Stroll's got the DRS. And me and him were scrabbling so much we were side by side through that corner that no one really got DRS. Because again, we were just neck and neck. That was pretty much unfortunate. But again, Perez is gone. And it's going to be hard just to stay with him too. Because again, the tires just fell off so much. But anyways, Ocon gets around Stroll. Ocon's on the hard tires. Stroll is out. His mediums have fallen off a lot. And now the battle is between me and the Alpine. Us and Ocon. Has an overtake possibly now. He's going to have an overtake shot down into turn number three. Once again, we're going to defend the inside. He's going to go around the outside. We're going to defend just enough, and we get that move done. And we are now ahead of Ocon, and we still hold on to P8. And Ocon is strong now battle it out. While they battle out, this helps up kind of pull a little bit of the gap here. So now we're going to start to push on these tires because, again, the tires are in a good window. But the tires did fall off just a little bit staying on. But, again, looking at this gap, I mean, it's just coming off slowly and surely. Ocon and Stroll with when they both have DRS when I mean when Stroll is dragging along Ocon and when Ocon is so much faster It's just gonna be hard just to stay ahead of these guys and it's just gonna be really really close the last Two laps of this Grand Prix two laps to go now um, Bit of a bit under pressure a little bit uh, kind of losing a little bit of a uh, focus here because I'm trying to defend so much from this man Ocon Ocon's gonna go around the outside and we're gonna give him just enough space. We're gonna go out around the inside. We almost, oh no, we break a little bit too late. We outbreak ourselves, and Ocon gets ahead. And he is now up into P8 in this race, and we're now down to P9. But again, points are still on the cards because, again, hopefully, if we don't bin it, we can get points in this race. But again, I wanna get as many points as I can. Espen Ocon now, he's now ahead, and we're gonna get the RSO once again. But again, that Alpine is pretty quick in the straight line. Just a little bit here once again, just taking a look a little bit. He's pretty quick down the straight, but we just back out of it just enough time. And again, we might have another shot down into the next couple of corners through this very sharp hairpin. I want to say too much of a hairpin, but again, through this part of the track, it's very, very, uh, this braking zone could lead to a dive bomb. But again, I just think right now it's just better off just to back out of that again. But another shot is a possibility to get around Espen Ocon in this race here once again. And again, coming into the last lap of this race, very much a crucial part in the penultimate lap. 
Hopefully we can get them, but it's going to be very tight ahead. And we're now moving on into the last lap of the Australian Grand Prix to see who can get the points here in today's race. But again, another shot. Now, turn one, break a little bit too late. And again, just he just got so much of a better exit. The AI are just so good on the exits, and Alcon is just gone. And in the DRS, though, once again, but we can't get Alcon. He's just, oh, man, he's just... I'm not breaking. I'm pushing so hard to get him, but I, it's impossible. It is so hard because, again, I just the tires fall off so quickly in this car, and it's not easy. And again, oh, my God, just, oh, my God, almost lost it there on that exit. It just, look how, that's how much I'm pushing to get ahead of Ocon, and I think that might have just threw the chances away. We're going to have to dump all the overtake down here. It's just going to be so hard to get past Ocon because he's dumping so much overtake. And just look at that straight line speed that Alpine has. He's absolutely flying and we don't even have that straight line speed we got the engine but we don't got it and again it's just that alpine alcon's quick <laughs> he's absolutely crazy leclerc is gonna win the grand prix but again it's just we struggled so much that we couldn't even get alcon because of how much he got us on that last lap we outbreaked ourselves and that could have cost us some valuable points here today but again the positive is we get the points though. We get P9 in this race. We're gonna be ahead of Lance Stroll though. We get points on the board. It's not P8, but it's P9. I'm very happy with that. Let's go. Well, what a drive that was to take the win for Ferrari today. So, Natalie, what do you think helped them deliver this result? I really feel the track layout, combined with the track temperatures we saw today, suited their car. These cars come alive when the tyres are just at the right temperature, and the driver did a great job managing that as well. They just look so comfortable out there. It's like anything. It always looks so easy when it all just clicks. Here come our winners now, a thrilling race and a tremendous effort by Ferrari. Their history is well known, so it's no surprise to fans the world over to see them come out on top once again. Well, there's your winner. Charles Leclerc wins the Australian Grand Prix as he did in last season, but he wins it again. And uh, I think they had a pretty good battle for P1 because... I saw that those two guys were going at it, so I don't know how Leclerc won, but it could have been a last lap pass. It could have been a last lap pass, honestly. I don't know what really happened there, but again, good result from Ferrari. Decent result for Red Bull. Ferrari back on top. On our side, though, that wasn't bad. That really was not bad at all. That I'm gonna, I am comfortable with that. That was some good racing, but again, I'm a bit annoyed because we could have had four points but again it's just <laughs> the luck wasn't there clearly and uh it's unfortunate but again these things happen but p9 two points ahead of us uh, ahead of stroll so yeah that's pretty good stroll got drive of the day though for starting for p13 i feel like launch stroll is going to be hell to race with this season because he's qualifying in the back and he's catching up, so we're basically going to lose points because of how much Stroll is underperforming. But Liam finishes last out of the last out of the runners, so yeah, that's not great. <laughs> that's that's a bit unfortunate. But uh, yep. Anyways, checking out the standings, uh, we got two points finally. We get points on the board. We get uh, P12 and P7 in the constructor, so we are comfortably ahead of Williams, Alpha, Alphatari, and Haas. But again, one of those two teams, if they just get points, if they just develop, they could easily be right on our cards. So again, we just got to I gotta score as many points as I can through these next opening rounds because, again, these points are going to matter so much. But Yeah, but Liam finished almost a minute off from everybody else uh two dnfs in this race yuki and lando and uh just looking back 26 seconds off from the leaders so that was pretty unfortunate but again things happen in today's result but i was very happy with this race the pace is there the car does have pace it really really does have a lot of pace in it and um 
very much happy with this result, and I hope that uh, we can bring in more for the team because, again, with this car and with this engine, if the engine holds on, we're getting points. But it kind of all depends also on the reliability. But that is it in Australia. That is it for Down Under. So uh, I hope you all enjoyed this race. And um, apologies that this video came out a little bit late. Um, this took me about like two times to commentate because, again, everything kind of corrupted. So, uh, yeah. So Sorry my commentary is a bit off and I'm losing a little bit of my voice. But it's all right. I hope you all have a good rest of your day. And be safe out there, y'all. And I'll see you all in the next one.